Hey amazing artist, Mrs. Parvin here. And I don't know about you, but a lot of time spent right now when we are sheltering in place is using words and letters to make other people feel better, whether it's with posters or writing uh, notes to people. So I thought we could take inspiration and use letters to make some really cool projects. Let me show you what I mean. Take a close look at these two pieces of art. Can you spot the letters in them? What do you think the artist is trying to say? So our first project is gonna be very loosely based on the art of Jasper Johns. Some of you may know that I really love Jasper Johns and he incorporated a lot of letters and numbers and words into his paintings and collages. We're gonna use the letters in our name or some fun inspirational words to make this project. Let's get started. Here's Jasper John's famous painting called Alphabet that's in the Art Institute of Chicago. Can you see how the letters are blended with the background? Ours isn't gonna look exactly like this, but it's gonna definitely inspire our work. You're gonna start with white paper and a Sharpie, and you're gonna go by making a soft curvy line right in the middle of the paper like this. You can do it the vertical way or the horizontal way. Then right above that line, you're gonna make another curve and below that line. So you'll have a total of three curvy lines like this. In those spaces, you're gonna start making letters. I'm gonna use the letters in my name, Mrs. Parvin. So I'm gonna write them making sure I'm touching the very top and the very bottom of each of those lines, the top being the edge of the paper. And I'm just gonna keep spelling it in order like so. You wanna fill all the space and you're gonna keep going across. So I come to the end of the row here and I have room for a little bit of an M. So I'm gonna start the M here and then continue it on the next line. You don't have to do that, but I think it looks kind of cool. And just keep writing over and over again until all the space is filled. So I finished this off camera, but you'll notice how the name just kind of keeps flipping to the next line. So sometimes it's broken in half and you're just gonna keep going until the entire piece of paper is filled like this. Here's one that I did that is in a vertical position and I use just upbeat words, safe, warm, calm, happy, silly, and home. So you could do that too if you didn't wanna use your name in your design. So it's time to add color. I started using some crayons and you could outline the letter itself or you could look for shapes of letters. So here I just kind of went around the S um, or you can kind of look and find the shapes in between the letters to color like this. Really there are no rules because this actually turns into an abstract piece. So use color to really help your design. So I'm gonna do this one with markers. I'm just gonna follow the lines of my Sharpie, go right up next to it with the marker, kind of almost like outlining it a second time. You can do that. You could color sections in. This is a really interesting shape. So I think I'm gonna color this in like this. Really there are no rules because this is gonna turn into an abstract design. So I'm gonna go back and do this. If you wanted to add some water and flick it out, that would paint it, that would be kind of cool. So you could have some solid blocks of color. Notice I'm using my careful coloring, heart eyes coloring, where I'm outlining and then filling it in like this. Um, and just really have fun with it. You could even do some pattern in some of the spaces. Why not, right? I think I'll do a little pattern of polka dots right here. Um, that's gonna add some more visual interest to your piece, just like this. So I finished the top two rows. I'm gonna keep working on the rest of this off camera, but this is what it looks like so far, and I can't wait to see yours. So our second project is gonna be inspired by the pop artist Robert Indiana, who became famous for his really simple images of very powerful words like love and hope. 
We are gonna create a bubble letter design inspired by Robert Indiana's work. Let's get started. Here's Robert Indiana's very famous love sculpture that sits in the city of Philadelphia, which is also known as the city of love. This has been recreated in cities all over the world. And in Spain, he even made it say amor, which is Spanish for love. To start, we need to turn our rectangular paper into a square. So we're gonna go from one corner and fold it directly across to the opposite edge like this, making sure it's lined up perfectly. Press down and slide our finger across. We have a nice sharp fold. And then we're gonna cut off this extra tail right here with a pair of scissors like so. Be really careful when you do this so you get a nice straight line. Once you have your square, we need to turn it into four sections. So kind of flatten out that diagonal fold. And now you're gonna fold your paper across once. Make sure the edges are lined up. Remember, always start with the finger in the middle. So now I have a little tent. And then I'm gonna fold it once the other way. This is gonna give me my four squares when I open up the paper. So really crease it down, open it up, and you'll see you have your four squares. Next, you have to pick a positive four-letter word. So here are some ideas. Love, hope, true, nice. What's a great word that you can come up with? I can't wait to see. Not required, but you could use a ruler and lightly trace over those fold lines just to show the boxes and make it a little easier when we start adding our letters like this. Make sure it's lined up right on that fold. If you don't know how to make a bubble letter, this is a little trick. You're gonna very lightly make the letter. I chose the word home, so I'm starting with an H. Notice you can barely see the H. So it's a stick letter and it's filling the whole space. Now I'm gonna create almost like a force field around that stick letter. And this is how we make a bubble letter. Again, I'm filling this entire square because that's the style of Robert Indiana, really huge letters like this. Take an eraser and very lightly erase that stick letter that you made to start your bubble letter. And then you have a really nice solid letter like this. So I finished my letters and notice they're really big. I made my O on an angle like Robert Indiana because I thought that would be fun. And it's time to add color. I'm using oil pastels. Um, crayons work great for this too. You just need something that has that waxy surface. You're gonna start by outlining your letters really bold. Press really, really hard here. You really wanna build up the wax on your paper. When you're done outlining the letter, then you can start adding some cool patterns. This is gonna create some visual interest and even some texture when we paint over it. Um, we've done a lot of work with patterns lately, so um, really whatever you wanna do to fill in your letters is great. And I'm just gonna work on this like that. So I finished outlining my letters and adding some interesting patterns inside each bubble letter. Now we're gonna use some watercolor paint to do a watercolor wash. This is called a wax resist or a crayon resist. Um, and you know I love a good resist. It's almost like magic. So when you go over the oil or the wax, the pattern still sh shines through, but creates a really nice layered effect. Think about color families as you're painting over it. Do you wanna use warm colors, cool colors? I'm using this purplish blue behind my H because purple and yellow are complementary colors. They're opposite each other on the color wheel, which means that they will really pop. If you don't have watercolor paint, you can use some of that homemade watercolor. Make sure you watch that DIY watercolor video. That works really great too. So I sped ahead, I'm just finishing this up and I'm still thinking about colors. These are complementary colors. The green and the red really pop against each other. Isn't it cool how just using simple letters can make a really bold piece of abstract art like this? It's finished. There it is. I'm really happy with it. I can't wait to see yours. 
So for our third project, we're gonna use a single letter or number and some perspective drawing to do a work of art inspired by a painting by Charles DeMuth called, I Saw a Figure Five in Gold. This was actually done in the 1920s during the Art Deco period, but you can see how it influenced maybe Jasper Johns and Robert Indiana's work. Let me show you what I mean. True fact, this is one of my favorite paintings and it was inspired by a poem by William Carlos Williams. Look closely at the picture. Can you tell what it's a picture of? It's actually a fire truck racing over a bridge at night. Look up the poem and you'll see how DeMuth took the words from the poem as inspiration for the painting. So you're going to start this project the same way by lightly drawing your letter or your number. I'm going to do the number two. I don't know. I just like the number two. So I've lightly drawn a stick of the number two like so. And then I'm going to create that force field around the number to create it into a bubble number or bubble letter. So just work slowly and carefully. You can press a little harder here. Go ahead and grab your eraser and erase that stick line in the center like so, just so you have a nice clean area to work with. Now I want you to kind of find the approximate center and put a dot there. Grab your ruler and draw a line without touching that dot, but imagining that the line is meeting that dot in the perspective. That dot's called the vanishing point. And you're gonna keep angling your ruler around. Notice I'm going around the number, so I'm not crossing over it or drawing over it. This is the trickiest part of the project. So really position your ruler so that you can see the number. Notice the numbers in front, and then these lines are behind the number. This is what's gonna create some depth and perspective in our picture. And always slide your ruler as if it is coming from that dot in the center and keep making lines all the way around your number like this. Okay, so I'm gonna finish this up right here. And I think I'm gonna do one more. So if you have sections that still look kind of wide and you wanna divide them further, you can go ahead and do that like this. The original painting is called, I Saw a Figure Five in Gold. So you are going to color in your central number or letter with yellow. I'm using markers here. You could use paint, crayons, colored pencils, really whatever you have. Notice I am using the edge of the marker to first outline, creating that bumper, which is gonna help me as I color in. Then use the flat side of the marker like a paintbrush to fill it in like this. Once your number is filled in, we're gonna start adding background color. This is a dark night sky, so we're gonna use sort of the dark, cool colors. I'm using this hunter green. And again, I'm outlining the area first. I'm going really slowly and carefully all around the number. And then I can use the flat side of the marker to fill it in like a paintbrush. Across, lift it up, across, lift it up and then I could even go in this direction, but only in one direction. I am not scribbling here. Really take your time to fill that color in. So remember, we can use our marker like a paintbrush and fill it in really carefully. That's how you're gonna get that nice, bold color with no white spaces like this. And just keep going on the opposite side and fill it all in. So I'm just finishing up this last section here. Notice I've used only cool colors, which is gonna make that yellow number two really stand out against the night sky. So the edge and the flat side, like a paintbrush, 
and the blocks of color go right around that number like so. There we go, it's finished. Don't forget to send me pictures of your completed projects. And remember, stay awesome, keep smiling, and know how much I miss you. Bye.